literary conversation uh, and literary community that you have here is, is something I haven't experienced in the U.S. Um, and then we also have a rock star, we have Florence Welch, and that's <laughs> very exciting, my favorite singer, so, so you have to love that. Um, okay, so the story is called It's Not Yours. After the funeral, my Uncle Jim got the idea to become my new father, and since this was a task he sensed he was not quite up to, he enlisted the help of his friend, Big Al. The two took me to Modoc in the fall to hunt geese. The big ones, Canadian geese, honkers, squeakers as Big Al called them, flying so low you can hear their wingtips squeaking. Your heart turned to rock and fingers like pontoons, which Big Al showed me, sticking his sausages in my face, the nails black with grease. I was 13, a third of Big Al's weight. Uh, sorry, I, I, I always do these like little interruptions, sorry. I'm just remembering some, some time, and it's of course fiction, but um, remembering what it's like to be in the truck with him. Um, so I was 13, a third of Big Al's weight, half my uncles jammed in between. Their loud voices, my uncle from Nebraska, Big Al from some other loud land, glanced off the exposed metal interior of the pickup cab, gained volume, more piercing than the sunlight. The windows rolled up, this in competition with the cheap, battery-powered tape recorder in my lap, hissing out Amway rhetoric. My uncle reached into my lap occasionally to turn up the static. You can get that diamond ring. You can have that Mercedes. My uncle was trying to sell Big Al on Amway. That was the other purpose of this trip, to get another person under him in the pyramid. I know it, Big Al was saying. I know those products are top-notch. I'm not questioning that. That's not my contention. That's not an issue here. What I am saying... Three months, my uncle shouted out with a toothy grin over the wheel. He had big yellow teeth, very square, and was a big man, 6'2", and he hooked his knuckles, both hands, on the steering wheel and leaned up close over it. You'll see turn around in three months, boy, oh, and he rumbled on like that for a while without a fixed word. Then, and ain't that something? Then he hit me in the chest in a hard, friendly man kind of way and looked at Big Al with a happy, surprised look on his face, as if suddenly it all just cleared itself up. There's no doubt there, Big Al said. That's not my contention. I wouldn't doubt about that. Then my uncle hit me again and chuckled. He pushed his glasses up hard and squinted out again over the steering wheel, his mouth open and lips pulled back a little over his upper front teeth. Because you're retiring ten years earlier and you have more, the tape blared out. You have that boat, that motorhome, that pool. You have those things and now you have the leisure to enjoy them. What I am saying, said Big Al. Then he stopped and held out his finger in front of me. Just one finger, the pointer, the rest in a large fist. Pull this, he said, grinning like he found the cookies. My uncle looked over, pushed his glasses, and grinned too. Sorry, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I'll bring it on. My disgust physically towards the men here is part of my disgust towards men generally in, in my life. I've had such a shitty experience with men. And I had a few experiences of kind of replacement fathers, um, men that my mother would date, where they were really cruel in a way that only men, in my experience, can be. Like, I, I went hunting when she dated a cop, and we went hunting for doves, and I was too young to hunt. I didn't have a license, I was only like 11. And one of his friends, we hunted with them all day, and they are all nice, and at the end he says, uh, how old are you, son? And I said, 11, and, and he's like, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, take you in. Um, you know, you've broken the law. And, uh, and he, he went on this shitty line for a long time until I was fucking crying, you know? And, uh, and then he was like, huh, well, now you know. I mean, I, of course, I'm not going to take you in, but you can never be too careful. And that kind of particular male, like, passing down of wisdom and, you know, I'm going to help teach you here, son, like, I really hate. Like, I, I hate it to the core of my being. Like, I, I want to take all those men and rip their heads off for a minute. Like, I, I just don't feel good about it, really deep in, in my core. So I think it makes sense that there'd be some disgust that comes out toward men in it. I mean, I just, I just had a lousy experience with them. They've been a big disappointment. I've never said that before. <laughs> oh, I'm like a psycho now. I feel like you need to decompress in therapy for a while. But your question really brought it out because you're right. You're totally right. I mean, you're a very smart reader now. <laughs>